For years, our next guest was basically a spy within the psychic community, learning their secrets. Now he's turning the tables on them. Sit. Sit. Thank you. People searching for answers have long turned to those who claimed they can sense more. The end of the world approaches. It always felt a bit fishy. Today, mystics continue to shill their connection to the other side for a few shillings. However, one thing psychics can see clearly, TV is the perfect medium. There are psychics on the network that have blown me away with their psychic abilities. Would you like to have a reading? To find answers about love and life, or to reconnect with family or friends now gone. She must have sold Avon or something, because I'm seeing... And she's laughing, she's still, oh, yeah. Professional skeptics like Mark Edward have had enough. It's Mark's mission to blow the whistle on a $2 billion a year industry. He says preys on the vulnerable and bereaved. He travels the world, dazzling people with his mind-blowing mind-reading skills, exposing these parlor tricks as nothing but sophisticated cons. Well, Mark joins us now from Christchurch, where he's attending the New Zealand Skeptics Annual Conference. Mark, what was that one thing that made you go from professional psychic to whistleblower? Well, it's very important for people to understand I was always a skeptic. What I was doing was scamming the scammers. So I'm glad you asked that because that's an important question. I, I was never a believer. My goal was to try and infiltrate and find out as much as I could about how this is working and, and the fascination I have for the artifice of conning uh, but not necessarily interested in hurting people. So I, I was never, when I worked as a psychic, it was with a goal of writing my book, Psychic Blues. Tell us about cold reading. It's something we hear about. Is that something to watch out for? What is it? Cold reading is the ability to, to uh, convince a, a person who's a total stranger that you know everything about them. And cold reading is a skill, but I kind of back away from calling it a skill because to me it's it's a... It's salesmanship. It's, uh, you know, it's being able to uh, immediately assess a person, profiling, that kind of thing. Uh, if you're good at it, you can know everything about the person who you're reading for before they even sit down at the table with you. Okay? Can, can so, you give I mean, me an example? And it, for you? Or, well, for anyone, yeah. What, what sort of things? Well, might... for, for you, since, since you asked, the one thing I get about you uh, is that sometimes you try and do too many things at once and you are super busy all the time. And because you're involved with people all the time, you don't always stop and take care of yourself. And, and does that sound about like what you're doing right now? Some people accuse me of taking care of myself all the time. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, no disrespect, Mark, but this could not be further from you. <laughs> He's one of the laziest well, you guys see, you'll ever you meet. You have to understand. <laughs> We could edit this part out. See? <laughs> that's a and good that's, point. And that's that, exactly, that is exactly what happens. The real magic is the editor and what goes on the cutting room floor. <laughs> so, you know, we just, we tape for an hour and then we do a three minute uh, excerpt and you make me look really good. So, <laughs> Did you ever feel bad when you were out there doing this research and meeting people who presumably had, had lost loved ones or been through some sort of trauma and, and were paying you to, to give them hope, as you say? Well, I definitely stayed away from uh, the more serious cases. Uh, I did private readings for a while, but I decided I didn't want to do that anymore for those reasons. But the odds, uh, what are, not the odds must be crazy. No, the, what I was going to say is the ends justify the means as far as I'm concerned because I know that I've changed people's lives for the better because I've gotten them away from, uh, we call them grief vampires. Cool. And believe me, I have seen some very egregious uh, people who have taken full advantage and that's why I'm on the road at the skeptics conferences talking about what to watch for, what to listen for and how to educate yourself and maybe your parents or people who get drawn into this, uh, this mess because it can be very dangerous. Hey Mark, thanks for taking us behind the curtain tonight, really appreciate it. Thank you very much. I feel like for people, for people who want to believe, it doesn't matter what Mark says, they're not going to believe him. In fact, he's told us that, um, that previously he said to them, uh, hey, I'm actually just using these tricks. And I've said to him, oh, no, you're just trying to hide your special magic powers. So, so strong. Some the, people, there's no help. The hope, yeah.
Um, if you'd like to hear more from Mark, he's at the New Zealand Skeptics Annual Conference in Christchurch this weekend. That kicks off tonight. It's at the Rickerton House, uh, which is reputedly haunted. But... Oh, be careful then. It's going to be really freaky. Yeah, freaky. <laughs>